to say, last lesson of the school year, right? It's labeled Riemann sums and summation notation. And you know about Riemann sums already. And remember all the rectangles that we made? And you added up the rectangles and found LRAM and RAM and MRAM. Remember that? That's what this goes with. But your book doesn't have it. And I think we were right in your break at the time we did that. So I didn't really have time to squeeze it in. And that's okay. We would have had to review it at this point anyway because you would have forgotten it by now. <coughs> they didn't used to have it on the AP exam. And maybe four or five years ago, um, all of a sudden it appeared on there. And I'm like, oh crap, like I didn't teach my kids that. It's not in our book. It's not, you know, so the next year and since then I've made sure and, and you know, added it into it. Um, summation notation is this right here, the epsilon. Okay. So anyways. It says, and, and you don't have to write all of this down yet until we get to maybe like the fourth or fifth slide, but I just wanted to kind of remind you like where it was coming from. Instead of using rectangles, so you guys remember the rectangles. So this would be an RAM graph, right? Because the right corner of the rectangles is on it. And this would be an LRAM. And remember how one was an overestimate, one was an underestimate, right? And what it kind of came down to was, you know, what, were the rectangles below the graph? That would make it an underestimate. Were the rectangles above the graph? That would make it an overestimate, you know? And then we had MRAM too thrown in, right? And MRAM was even more accurate. And then, you know, instead of using left and right endpoints, we could, we could even take and use um, trapezoids. We did that too, and we had the trapezoid rule. So this all is kind of leading up to that, which again, you've already done that part. But basically what we were doing in each of these is we were finding what the width of the rectangle was and what the height of the rectangle was and we were multiplying them together. Length times width, length times width, length times width. And that's what this is right here showing. Here's the width and here is the height in this case. Here is the width and here is the height and here is the width and here is the height and here is the width and here is the height. And you found all of those and then you added them together. And then there were shortcuts where you could just take the width since it was the same and take H1 plus H2 plus H3 plus H4. And we did that, you know, along the way as we did this. But I need to get you back into, in order to find the area, it's the length times the width or the width times the height, you know, however you, however, you know, you take a look at it. And that the area is somewhere in between the LRAM and the RAM. You know, that those are estimates and so it narrows it down, but then if we found MRAM, that'd be even more accurate, okay? Um, and then we talked about, well, what if we broke it into eight strips instead of four? That was even more accurate. So we kept looking for things that were more and more accurate the whole way, but still finding the area was still length times width. But it brought in your answer into, you know, a more accurate range of answers then. You can look at having all the way up to a thousand rectangles. Um, of course, that would be a computer-generated thing. We'd never ask you to do that many. I, we still will never ask you. But the more that you do, the closer that the answers for LRAM and RAM are to one another. So again, we talked about that already. And then this here is showing, okay, this is 10 rectangles, this is 30 rectangles, this is 50 rectangles. And you started to see that even though this is an overestimate, this is not as much of an overestimate as what that one is. And this one here looks like it's really close to being, you know, the correct answer. So, you know, we looked at each one of those things right there. And so then it came down to, so the area actually is the limit of the right Riemann sum, where, where the, the right Riemann sum and the, where the left Riemann sum are the same and you have an infinite number of rectangles, like if you could. And that that's what the area is, is as they got closer and closer, that was the actual area. So then when we start subdividing this and maybe they're not rectangles, maybe they're different shapes in there, okay? Whatever the case, in order to find the width of the rectangle, that was our change of X which was B minus A over N. And we use that. You want to write that down. You need that. 
Now, what is A and B? A and B is the interval that the shape goes from. You take the highest minus the lowest, and you divide it by however many rectangles that you're looking for. If you don't know the number of rectangles, you just leave it in A, and you're going to see that in today's formula. If you then divide the strips into, here is the, the very leftmost x, the initial x, and then x sub 1, that's one width. And then x sub 1 to x sub 2, x sub 2 to x sub 3, x sub 3 to x sub 4, etc. Then your a is your first x, and your b is your last x. So it's going from a to b, okay? And those are your x's that you're talking about. The right endpoints of the subintervals are, and you need to write this down right here. You don't need that comma, but x sub 1 equals a times change of x. I'm sorry, plus change of x. I'm going to go back to the picture here then to show you what that's referring to. This x sub 1 right here is that first value plus whatever that distance is between them. That distance that's between them is the change of x. Okay. Then if you want the next one, you'd have to add two change of x's. That change of x plus that change of x. So that's what then this next one is. You don't have to write that down, though. Okay. That guy is going to be the important one. And you can keep going, and that's why you see the dot, dot, dot. And you can keep going until you have all of them figured out. Now, this is probably one of the toughest things to look at today. And you don't even necessarily have to write it down. You just need to understand it. Okay? It says R sub n. This means R ram sub n. Okay? This textbook happens to just use an R rather than an R ram, okay? And notice this is a y value. F of x is a y value. That's the height of the rectangle. And then change of x is the width of the rectangle. And then look at this one. This is the height of the next rectangle times the width of the next rectangle. Do you see how this is just adding up the rectangles? But it's in function notation using f of x sub i, or f of x sub 1, instead of h. And that's what makes it hard to look at. All this is right here is adding up rectangles. And this is saying this is the height of your last rectangle. This is the width of your last rectangle. And then all of these are in turn being added. So this here is just adding up rectangles. That's all that is. It's just hard to look at in that format. And so this here is saying the area is the limit of r sub n as n approaches infinity. And look, height times width, height times width, height times width. It's just adding up rectangles. That's all it is. But it's the notation that throws us off. And then down here, isn't it pretty much the same? It's just that it's L ram. But it's still the height times the width, the height times the width, the height times the width every time. It's just the area of the rectangles. That's all those things are referring to. And then these are saying that the area equals that one and the area equals that one. And do you remember how on that pre couple of slides ago we said we want the two to equal each other? We want them, we want to use as many rectangles as we can so that once I add up the rectangles that both the answers are essentially the same. So this is saying that means the area is the height times the width, the height times the width, the height times the width, all of those added together. So now, what does that mean for us? It means that since we're adding them all together, I could replace the addition signs with a summation sign. Because this means to just add them up. And it's saying, take the height times the width and add all of them up. So instead of writing all of this 
we can now write it in this summation. All it is, though, is adding up the rectangles. The height times the width, the height times the width, the height times the width of each one. We don't need to do it another time. So, the three things that are important that you need to have written down before we move forward are, you need to know that the change of x is the b minus a over m. You need to know that x, and this might be a little bit different on your paper right now, but this should be really x sub i, I think you have x sub 1. Change it to x sub i equals a plus change of x times i. It could also be x sub k equals a plus change of x times k. Um, in fact, I'm thinking your worksheet needs to be again, your worksheet today needs to be it could be either, though. If that's the case, then this would also be the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of k equals 1 to n of f of x, change of x. This is just saying, add up all of the height times the width. So the problems are going to look kind of like this. There's two kinds of problems, okay? Either one, that it's given in summation form and you have to write it as an integral, or two, it's going to be written as an integral and you have to change it into a summation. Okay, it could be either. It says, find an expression for the area under the graph of f as a limit. Do not evaluate the limit. If the directions today are in as an integral, then for this, I'm going to say the integral of x squared plus the square root of 1 plus 2x dx from 4 to 7. That's in the form of an integral. If they want it in summation as a limit, I, there's different ways that they could, you know, put the directions for this. It means that your answer needs to say the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of, maybe I should use k equals 1 to n since I know the, the worksheet today has a k in it. I'll do it like that. k equals 1 to n. And I have to have the f of x next and the change of x here. So I have to fill in for these two things. But the f of x is not this f of x. Do you remember how x sub i up above uh, is written as a plus change of x i? Or, again, let me change that to k's. x sub k equals a plus change of x times k. Change of x right here is 7 minus 4 over n, which is 3 over n. x sub k is a, which is 4. Doesn't this go from a to b? Which is 4 plus 3 over n k. In place of these x's, I have to plug this in. So this is the first one you're seeing, so it's going to look hard. But after you see the second one, you'll be like, oh, okay, it's okay. And by the time you get to the third one, you're like, oh, it's really not hard. Okay. It's just weird. So in place of these, I have to plug this in. So I, I'm going to put a parenthesis here. I have 4 plus 3 over nk squared. That's in place of that x plus the square root of 1 plus 2 times 4 plus 3 over n k. And then I need the change of x, which is times 3 over n. This right here is in limit form or as a summation. You know, like I said, the directions kind of change on that. But what we have always done so far this school year is this. 
it's a lot easier, right? We can see why your book skips over it. But then all of a sudden, AP throws it on like this, and if you don't know how to do it, you can miss a couple problems. I know the first year they put it on, they put it on like three or four questions. I was like, You know, and, and so I, I want you to know it. I want to make sure it's worth taking a day to make sure in case they put three or four of them on there that you have it. But they like putting this on one part of an extended response question so they can see how you write it. It's not like you can pick it out out of a lineup, you know. So let's try a few more. Like I said, the first one you see is kind of hard to see. All right, so the next one, find an expression for the area under the graph of F as a limit. See how it's asking it for a limit? Yes, this is from zero to pi of the square root of sine x dx is how you would write it as an integral. But that's not what the question is. It wants it as a limit. So to do it as a limit, I need two things. I need change of x, which is pi minus 0 over n, or pi over n. I need x sub k, which is a, which is 0, plus change of x, pi over n, times k, which is just pi over n to k. So now the limit notation starts with the limit is n approaches infinity of the sum of k equals um, 1 to n. And then from there, I need that times that. What goes in here is I have to take this x right here. Oh, that's going to have to be right. I have to take this x right here and plug it in for that. So it's the square root of sine of pi over n k. That's the limit notation. It's kind of like a formality. You know, all it is though, all it's saying is you're adding up the height times the width of each rectangle. These two go in the other direction. I'm going to pop down to this one and have you try this one. So you guys try this one. Find an expression for the area under the graph of f as a limit. Do not evaluate the limit. Not as an integral. So first you should start with change of n, or change of x, which is 8 minus 3 over n, which is 5 over n. Did you get that? Okay. Then you need your x sub k, which is a, which is 3, plus 5 over n k. Did you get that? And then from there, you should get a limit as n approaches infinity, of the sum of k equals 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus 3 plus 5 over n k times 5 over n. Now I will tell you that sometimes then, and on the worksheet for sure, you might have to take and combine those together. So I don't think, well, let's see, go back to that first one. On the worksheet, like for this, you might have to actually square that. That doesn't mean 4 squared and 3 over nk squared. It means FOIL it. Don't forget the inside and outside terms as well. Okay? You cannot just square both of those. Okay? That would leave off the middle terms. All right. Now, what happens if it's given to you in limit form. 
And instead, you have to, it says, determine a region whose area is equal to the given limit. Do not evaluate the limit. Could you write it even as an integral? So I'll start breaking it down and saying, okay, these two pieces here that are being multiplied are my height and my width. You see the three over N, that's the change of X. So you're undoing it. Your change of X is three over N. I know that the numerator is B minus A, so that means B minus A is equal to 3. But I don't know, don't know B or A yet. But once I know one of them, I'll be able to figure the other one out. I know that my X sub K, or in this case it's X sub I, huh? X sub I is 1 plus 3I over N. Could I say that? Right? Could I say that this whole thing is my x? In which case, this thing here would be the square root of x, where in place of the x, I plugged that whole thing in. You see that? So you kind of have to undo it. If this is the case, then doesn't this mean a is 1? Because it'd be a plus change of x times i. So that means a is 1. So now take that up here. If A is 1, what's B? 4. Right? Mm -hmm. um, because the formula for X is A plus change of XI, A plus change of XI. And so it's right there. It's that guy right there. Okay. So now I know it's going from 1 to 4. So could I, if I had to write it as an integral, I could now say from 1 to 4. And the function itself is square root of x dx. So I could say my f of x is this. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know it's not like from 0 to 3? Thank you, yes. So I could be. Okay, and we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. I'm glad you asked about it. I plan on talking about it anyway. First, let's look at this region, and then it's gonna make yours easier to understand too. Okay, so here's one, two, three, four. If I plug a one in there, the square root of one is one, so that's going there, right? One. And then, um, If I plug a 4, I'm, I'm just trying to graph it, you know, graph the square root of x right here. The square root of 1 is 1, 0. Square root of 4 is 2. Boom. Here's, here's the function. It's asking me for the area from 1 to 4. So it's asking me for that area right in there. Okay. Now, the question that was posed, how do we know it's not 0 to 3? of square root of, x, but it wouldn't be square root of x if that's the case, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to change this. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Hold on, that thing moved. <laughs> so the question was, basically, what if I only had this be my x? So I'd have f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x, where the x is only this part. If x sub i is only 3i over n, then it's like 0 plus 3i over n, meaning a is 0. If a is 0, then what minus 0 equals 3? And it would be b is 3. So it could be from 0 to 3. But then this function right here wouldn't be just an x. It'd be a 1 plus x. Now let's look at the graph of that. Whenever I have a square root of x, it's that function that's up there. But as soon as I put a plus 1 underneath it, it moves it to the left one. So it takes and moves the graph over like this. So if I now look from 0 to 3, 
Isn't that the same region as that? So it can be. Because they're the same answer. So when you are sitting and looking at something like this and you're trying to figure out, like, you're going to know the change of x. That's going to be the easiest part. And then when you look over here, you see that the change of x is also right there, which it needs to be. It's up to you to then decide, am I going to use the whole thing or am I only going to use part of it? The directions here were determine a region whose graph is equal to the given limit. Both of those are. Both answers are correct. Okay. There's no tricks on this worksheet. So it's pretty much what you see is what you get, which is nice. It's a nice, um, you know, like you don't have to like take it apart. Like what if somebody else says, well, I want mine to be two plus three I over N and here I'm going to have negative one plus X. That would work too. Your A and your B would just be different because this time the graph will be shifted to the right instead of to the left. But, you know, you don't have to do a lot of that stuff on these problems. You know, you could, but you don't have to. Okay, so good question. All right, so now let's try this one. Let's give it a try. Determine a region whose area is equal to the given limit. Do not evaluate the limit. Okay, so come up with a region, so I want to know from where to where, let's write it as an integral because that's what this worksheet does, it's either an integral or a limit. So let's write it as a limit. Change this to integral. So did anyone figure out yet what your change of x at least is? Sorry, it's the same, it's very similar to the last one. That means B minus A is equal to 3. What does anybody have X sub I being? Mm -hmm. Does it have to be that? No, it could be 1 plus 3i over n. It could be 0 plus 3i over n. It could be, you know, like, it could change. But you don't have to be super creative on that, okay? So what would B be, or sorry, what would A be if this was the case? Let's start with that. 2. Two. And what would B be? 5. Five. So now we have the integral from 2 to 5, doesn't an integral also mean it's S for some because you're adding up the area under the curve, right? I mean, it's the same kind of notation, it's just from a different country, apparently. Now this says it's a fourth root, so I'm going to need a fourth root for the function. That fourth is kind of hidden in there. And it's going to be, for how we chose our x, it's going to be the fourth root of x. Don't forget your dx. But if you had this as 1 plus 3i over n, then that means there's still another 1 left there to have 1 plus x. Okay. What do you think? So it's writing them in two different ways as a limit or as an integral. Okay, so let's kind of get you started on this. This is your homework for tonight. Um, this here is written by one of the AP graders, so she, she knows her stuff. Soon um, there's going to be some videos available online in, in April that AP puts out. And so you'll actually finally get to meet the, the people that write these right here. Verge Cornelius and Mark Corrali are two of them. Um, this one is oh, this one's Mark Corrali that made this one. Um, he's a hoot, actually. He is, he's quite funny. So, he, and they like to do a little math joke each video they have, too. But I would take notes. I would, you know, pause it, try the problems ahead. But 
Okay, on the first one, it gives you an integral and asks you to write it as a limit. So let's try it together here. Let's see how you do. So this limit is the integral from 0 to 4 of x squared plus 1 dx. All right, so change of x. We need that first. Change of x is going to be what? 4 over m. And then we need our x sub k. Our x sub k is going to be, what do you think? which is just 4 over n times k, right? And then we're going to take that, and our f of x right here is x squared plus 1. So I need to take and plug that in for that right there. 4 over n k squared plus 1. Which isn't that 16 over n squared k squared plus 1? So we have the limit as n approaches infinity, k equals 1 to n of that function that we just came out with, 16 over n squared k squared plus 1, and then times 4 over n. And so now we find that answer. And I will tell you, some of these look like you think you're choosing the right answer and it looks so similar to the next one that you don't get it. All right, so it looks like it's on the back of that page, the bottom right corner, right? You see it there? All right, so let me leave you off there, but talk these through with each other, okay? And make sure you're showing your work. I should see on every single problem this kind of work over here. If you don't have that, you'll end up messing yourself up. So. All right, you're all set. Agreed.